Good morning and welcome to Surf All Day A1A. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope everybody out there is having a good one with their friends and family. And if you've got less friends and family around you this year, well, this too shall pass. Okay. So let's get right to it. I'm asked about how to get into surfing quite a bit and I decided to make a quick live stream to give you some tips and the idea is how do I get into surfing for less than 200 bucks because if you're getting into a new hobby sport whatever I think you should invest low you can increment up you can always increase your capability moving forward once you're armed with more knowledge and more understanding of what interests you the most within that new thing Okay, so what are your options? Well, in terms of an inexpensive surfboard, and I'm talking about one that costs you about $150. Hey, good morning. Because that's what you'll need to be spending on the surfboard in order to have enough left over to get everything else you need. I'm gonna assume you can grab a towel already. But the surfboard, let's say we're going to spend $150. That leaves you a couple of options. Go on the surfboard shopping experience. In other words, go to surf shops and go see what they've got. Really, when you're talking about $150 in the used board section. Now, what you'll find at surf shops is a mixed bag of used surfboards, of course. But what you'll find in surf shops is a mixed bag of what their standard is for accepting a used board. When you buy used fiberglass epoxy surfboards, hard surface surfboards, when they get older, they can get delaminated, meaning the fiberglass separates from the foam. They can have lots of things. They can start weighing much more. So they can basically, even though they look like a surfboard, surf horribly and be ready to break at a moment's notice. So I don't recommend that you purchase a used, what I would call crapper surfboard to start. The other thing is the board you're really going to need to start or want to start, which is something like a fun shape, something that's a little wider, a little thicker, probably not going to be the board you're going to find in the used board section. What sells in used boards are long boards. Period. Ask any surf shop. Hey, you want to buy my 6'2", my 6'4"? You know, it, it's a lot less interest than, hey, you want to buy my 9, You want? To, how about my 9 foot long board? They know they've got people coming in all the time looking for that, whereas the short boards are a dime a dozen. So, again, if you spend $150 in a surf shop to get a used surfboard, you're going to get something that's uh, probably outside of the zone of what you would wish for. That's why I always recommend that you go with a soft top to start. And by the way, the soft top is going to be fun to have even after you get really good at surfing. I love it. Like I'm looking at these waves today. So much fun for a soft top. It allows you to explore parts of the wave that you might not explore if you had a, a regular shortboard. Not to say good, bad, or indifferent, just saying that it's a different part of it. So it's novel, it's interesting, and I love it. Soft top surfing, in addition to all the other types of surfing, to include body surfing. Keep that always in the collection. I had an epic body surfing session last night after my actual surfing session. You know, why did I do that? Well, because I surfed with my older son for a little bit, and then I shot on in and went and body surfed with my younger son. Right, so again, just using the type of, oh man, will you check out that sunrise? This is why we do it, right? If for nothing else, the waves are fun, I love them, but to connect with what's going on like this every day, not a bad thing, or any day. So to get a soft top, now you, there are lots of options available for soft tops. I'm going to place a link in the description so you can grab one. But uh, yeah, for under $200, certainly soft tops all day. I would recommend getting the smallest soft top that's going to float you for your height, size, weight. But you can get a 5.6 right now. I was just looking at, at a bunch of them for, for not much. Anyway, so I'll put some links in the description. If you're interested, go click there. That helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It's basically just links to Amazon. 
And while you're at Amazon, if anything you grab while you're there goes to help the channel, same kind of way. So simple. And what you'll see in terms of soft tops are a wide variety now of options. Everything from something that is something like an evolved boogie board, I would say, which is like a beater board style of board. We have a number of videos on the channel, beater boarding. And uh, that's kind of the way left side of the spectrum all the way to a, you know, full on longboard on the other side. And then in the middle somewhere, different variants of fish short board, fun shape. So really quite a variety. And here's the other advantage of starting out with a soft top. And the advantage is that when you ram it into the, into the sand over and over and over, you don't have to worry about it breaking generally. It'll get, you know, scuffed up and this and that, but typically they're pretty tough. Typically they're pretty tough. And on the days when it's real small, like in the summer when it's not November in Florida, uh, you're gonna be able to surf it right there, like microscopic waves. Soft tops, if you get enough foam, have the ability to catch waves and ride parts and areas of waves that you would think unsurfable on a normal surfboard. To include surfing these short pound type of uh, waves that are coming through now. Do you know what the number one selling surfboard is in America? I do. <laughs> And it's not what I thought it was going to be. It's the Wavestrom 7 foot, looks like a fun shape, longboard, short longboard. Yeah, and it's same idea. It's inexpensive. I'll put a link into those two. We're actually, I've been in communication with the people who make them and they've offered to send some. So I'm thinking of doing maybe a contest or do an event. Hopefully I can get them to give me one I can give away. We'll see, but cool people there for sure. But yeah, they sell a lot of boards, <laughs> a lot of boards. You know, and what are most people doing in surfing? You know, most people are not expert level surfers. I'm certain of this, having gone around different areas of the world and most people are not. If you're, if you're fortunate and live right next to the coast, a place that has waves, you know, like I do, then you have that luxury and you can become excellent. But most are not. Most are coming for a vacation, just trying it for a couple of weeks, or they're, you know, they live on the land side near an ocean, they just come over on weekends or they whatever. So, you know, they want to kind of dabble in it a little bit. And that's why a soft top board, one that's even short enough that you can turn it and have super fun on it without getting hurt, without worrying about it being damaged, without it being a piece of junk really hits the spot so a lot of I mean really the reason why a board company like that can sell so many boards love them or hate them is they they provide uh, they meet a need and which is the most common need which is not necessarily the need for speed it's the need for fun and the need for convenience and the need for affordability and you get all these things when you get a soft top so I've got several soft top boards and down to the boogie board subgenre of soft top in my garage and we surf them all the time and they they are an essential part of our quiver our collection of wave expl exploration options uh, I'm super glad I have one I've got an 80 much like that wave stream I'm gonna be getting some waves from soon uh, I've got smaller five foot board in there and then the beater board and, and another little kind of mini fun shape thing that jack surfs in fact this is motivating me to try to remember to put a uh, tag up in this video to point you over to the ne this next one i'll make related but I'll go ahead and pull out my soft tops and give you a soft top explore so you can see what I've got. You know, I'll generally talk about how much I paid for them. You can see how they stood the test of time. And let me tell you, when we ride these soft tops, they're eating sand a lot. So they've been put through the uh, through the test over and over and over again. Oh, oops. I just see people are getting on the live stream. I'm gonna turn on the live chat. 
So in the comments for this video, excuse me, not enough coffee. In the comments for this video, please let me know your experience with soft tops, particularly how they meet those three needs I talked about that the soft tops meet, and if they do, and, and what you would recommend for a beginner board for people. You know, I just gave my perspective, but there's certainly an infinite amount of other perspectives. On this channel, we're starting to transition to helping people get into the sport, get into the experience, uh, and that was after popular demand. I had a lot of people asking me to do that, and um, you know, that's really kind of what the YouTube thing is. It's the largest search engine in the world, YouTube. And uh, or, or Google, but YouTube, I think, is uh, meant to to help solve problems for a lot of people. That's one of the most common uses. Andrew, thanks. 10O Greco soft top is what you started. Yeah, super floaty, super fast paddler. Yeah, man, great comment, and uh, I couldn't agree more. I, do you find, Andrew, that you're able to get into parts of the wave that you would have never imagined even being interested in on a shortboard? I almost find that on a on those longer soft tops like that, especially on really really small days, that it you can paddle them and pop up so fast that the wave almost seems to slow down. I'm not saying the wave slows down. What I mean is it the slow motion. You have a lot of time to interact with the wave, and you're up and riding on a part of the wave you typically would not be able to ride. You, you know, you may be on a shortboard, but it's just. It, I'm telling you, I think it's different, everybody. And the difference is, I'm not going to take my, yeah, the smallest bumps, Andrew. Yeah, totally agree. It's like it's like freaky almost. I can tell you, after surfing for 25 years or something, when I first got on a soft soft top, it was like surfing for the first time again in some weird way. But I knew how to catch the wave, but the thing wiggled. You know, like really, the longer ones really flex. That's the other part. It's it's such a cool wiggly experience to be on one of these and and unlike what I will do I was about to say with my RS 10 o beautiful double stringer inlaid hibiscus flower fabric blah blah I'm not putting that thing there you know there's no way that thing wouldn't even make it there it's got a fin that's 12 inches long it's fiberglass it's just I could and probably make it through a lot of days but then I'll get hooked on a rock uh, things are gonna happen with the soft top, you're just cruising right on through, and I mean, you're stepping off in the sand over and over and over. And I'll put a, I'll try to put a link here to some of the videos we have of microscopic days. You can see Jonathan surfing our, our 8 soft top, and to me, it's almost inconceivable how, how small. I mean, it was, it was like a ripple. But, uh, anyhow, so yeah, you can put that board in these precarious situations, and days that other people call flat, uh, nah, not so much. For the soft top, I mean, is there anything? Because if you've got enough imagination and, and uh, creativity, I think you could make most any day at least marginally fun. Now, here's the last thing I'm going to talk about in this live stream, which is one of the things I was thinking about, and that is uh, the idea of having a what I call an arm tuck bike board. Soft tops are uniquely suited for that as well, although they can tend to be maybe a little heavier depending. Hey there, how you doing? Try not to get people in the videos if they don't want to be or they don't. <laughs> but the arm tuck, you know, bike board is that short pound traveler that you just got a half hour you can hit that surf with and you want to just hop on your beach cruiser and shoot down for a half hour surf and whatever's happening at the end of your street. To me, nothing beats that. A leashless you know, small soft top board yeah, is, is, a, is a fine pick for that, my friends. Okay, so thanks for watching Surf All Day A1A. If you like these kinds of videos, please subscribe, please turn on notifications so you'll be notified as these live streams occur, usually daily. You get the side benefit of seeing what the ocean's doing in my neck of the woods. Also, if you're interested in growing fruit in your backyard. I know a lot of surfers I know are uh, growing edible things in your yard or in your apartment. 
then go ahead and check out Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel, where I talk about all kinds of edible landscaping concepts. Pretty deep now, actually. It's got a million views a year now, that channel, so it's popular, and uh, popular enough that it's super fun. And I have a viewer challenge going on right now where I've asked people to send in a half a, a, a half a minute long, 30 second long landscape shot video of anything edible they've got growing on in their yard or apartment this time of year, even if it's not growing, if it's just alive. Some In some areas, the people will send me pictures of things that are covered in snow. But it's still alive and it's getting ready to pop out some sweet, sweet apples or plums or something, you know, when the frostiness relents. So you can check out that channel. Also, I've got a channel called One Step Zen, which is a funky little meditation channel. Basically just a place where I try to help people relax, myself included. And then Florida Fishy Finger, which is my fishing channel. <laughs> yeah, I have too many YouTube channels. We go out fishing, and then I've also been getting into checking out micro skips, which is a cool interest of mine. I have one, and I love them. And they're, again, they're cheap, easy. They, they, they you know, the micro skiff, the little flats boat for fishing in Florida, it's kind of like the soft top of of fishing boats. It, it lets you explore areas of of the of your local fishing spots that you could never get to in other other boats. You know, you're not fishing in five inches of water typically in most other boats. So yeah, lots of things. I've even started up a YouTube channel to help YouTube creators share my experience basically on you know setting up a little studio and, and how to monetize your videos how to grow your, your channel your subscribers all that kind of stuff Not, nothing but just trying to help folks that uh, yeah that are getting into the hobby all right thanks for watching surf all day when I have a great day hope you have a fantastic experience with uh, your loved ones today and maybe you'll get out for a quick surf but if not don't FOMO don't don't fear of missing out just Enjoy what's happening right under your feet, and that might be some sweet, sweet turkey meat.